What's up everybody? I'm Jared Poirier, the founder of Galaxy Design, and welcome to a brand new series. This is the Creator Series. This video is brought to you by Eureka Hub, the co-working space of choice for tech startups and creatives in Toronto. With dedicated desks, private meeting rooms, events, and access to Eureka's wider network, Eureka Hub has all the resources that your business needs. See for yourself at eurekahub.com. Welcome back to the Creator Series, everybody. I am here with my main man, Peter Hatch. Peter, thank you so much for thanks being for on the me. show. Should, yeah, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate uh, you coming down to Eureka Hub today. Yeah. Uh, it's getting pretty crappy weather outside, yes. and you still it, made the winter. effort to come through. So, yeah, man, uh, it's awesome to have you on the show. Took a little while to get you here. You're a busy yeah. guy. Uh, yeah, why don't you uh, start off just by telling everybody what you've been working on? Um, well, I've been on this movie shooting at Peter Bro. Nice, if nice. People who don't know, Peter Bro's uh, about two hours out of Toronto, and that's why I had to... I I think I bailed two times on you so far. It happens, it happens, I know. But it was uh, the kind of job where we were filming overnights, yeah. so I never saw the sun, 14 hour days uh, for about 25 days. Yeah, so I crazy, feel like man. a zombie a little bit after that. So. Nice, nice. But it's going to yeah. be uh, good good footage, Good. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a good production. The movie's everything. called yeah. The Novice. Nice. Uh, it's about kind of a, a rower in college who gets cool. really obsessed about winning, and it's actually, it's going to be a wicked movie. Like, right it's beautiful, It's it's great. Yeah, yeah. So for uh, those of you who don't know Peter Hatch, I mean, I'd be pretty surprised. He is pretty famous. But uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> before yeah, we get yeah. uh, into too many details here, uh, why don't you just tell everybody uh, what you do, kind of your background in like the film and television industry. Okay. And uh, yeah, and maybe we'll get into a little bit about your production company as well. Okay. Should, should I look at the audience directly? Yeah, you can look or at them. You can look at me. Yeah, you can look at them. Hey guys. You can like turn around and look at that. Uh, one, what's guess. up? That would be pretty um, weird. But. Okay, anyways, I, yeah, I work, I work in film. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, going way back, I wanted to make video games when I was younger. Nice. But uh, I started trying to do some programming and stuff, and it, it was too hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow, with the camera, you just point it and press record, and you can yeah. tell stories that yeah. way. Yeah. And uh, so I got kind of enthralled by it early in high cool, school cool. so I've just been that's kind of been my decision since yeah your passion for totally. uh, for a very long time yeah right on right on and then uh what was it really about like the film and television industry and stuff like that that like spoke to you so much just that ability to like put a story out there and it doesn't take as much work it's a little bit easier because I, mean, I feel like it is a lot of work it's a lot of work <laughs> I've realized it's a lot more work than I thought it was yeah yeah it sounded easy uh, it first. sounded easy yeah. but uh, you know I think that there's a few reasons I love uh, film uh, yeah. one there's it's always different there's always yeah. variety like today I'm here with you or mm -hmm. uh, talking in a more formal environment yes. sometimes yeah. I'm out in the woods sometimes yeah. I'm Peter Rowe for a month so it's always different that uh, is nice. kind of a yeah. weird variety like it's not the same thing nine to five every That's day good. so yeah. I don't like routine and that helps mm, yeah I'm a lot like that too I really don't like uh, doing that's a, why a routine I'm so happy thing. you're yeah. now doing video and yeah, stuff today. Yeah, you're, one of, uh, you're one of us now <laughs> yeah man they got me in the cult uh, the video cult, <laughs> the video spend, cult. spending my money on the gear Jared so. stuck with us forever yeah. okay um, <laughs> For yeah sure. man I mean Everyone loves movies, right? Yeah. So yeah. I grew up watching movies and watching yeah. shows. So it's like that creative outlet. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one thing I like is that when you make a movie and you sit people down and say, you should watch, watch what I've made, you mm -hmm. have their attention for that amount of time. Right, right. Um, you could lose their attention right away if it's good. Still, yeah. But um, if you're just telling someone a story, yeah. it doesn't have that same captivate. You can't use music and for you sure, can't for use sure. all these other. It's elements. a pretty special and like unique thing these days, especially like in the age of cell phones and uh, social media and stuff. To actually have someone's uh, full attention for like I don't know two hours, maybe. Three. I know it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's I mean, have someone's attention for two hours yeah. is almost sounds like crazy. Yeah, man. Days, you know? So, so you work on a lot of uh, professional productions, do all types of different stuff. You're busy on sets all the time, and that's great. Uh, I actually want to focus in a little bit on your personal stuff. So, you actually have uh, a project, uh, Deform Lunchbox. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, what's going on with that, man? What's, um, what's Deform Lunchbox so up to? Deform Lunchbox is kind of like a uh, it's like a horror kind of production company. Yeah, we cool. kind of uh, stretch our limits. We do anything that we could consider deformed. Yeah. So okay. that's uh, black comedy or thriller or suspense yeah. or experimental weird, weird stuff. Just anything yeah. that's outside the ordinary. Cool, cool. With kind of a focus on darker, 
darker, edgy, yeah, or yeah. Horror, and horror stuff. And you're stuff. doing like short films, right? Yeah. So right now we've made a bunch of short films, yeah. and our goal is to you know eventually uh, branch off into features, maybe okay. web oh, series okay. and stuff. But right yeah. now we've been doing a lot of shorts just to kind of build a team, build a catalog of work. And nice, nice. And how has that experience been? Like, have you learned a lot just by um, doing that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's like every project's different right mm -hmm. like one film you work on and you're like wow this really came together it was right, a great team right. and other projects you're like man this was this was a lot of work it was we went through hell to get it done so yeah, yeah. it kind of depends on the project Absolutely. but um i love it man i love yeah. the genre and we have a little team and it's nice we've been able to bring on some um some people who were, went to york university for film and they wanted yeah, to like get yeah. their feet wet and making movies so we paired up with some young filmmakers to kind of give them opportunities. That's so awesome, it's man. Yeah. it's not just a a one person thing. It's a we bring in lots of people for all the sure. Time. And yeah. it's been uh, some way for you, you to like express yourself creatively, and then also have like creative freedom, right? Like when you're doing yeah. something for yourself, and uh, you get to make the decisions, and there's mm -hmm. no one coming in and saying, "Oh no, we need to rewrite this," or you know, adding mustaches, removing them. Well, sometimes like we do add mustaches. Oh yeah? yeah? Okay. Yeah. Well, the CGI has been seamless, so. <laughs> um, yeah, those. totally. Like, it's it's <laughs> nice to, uh, you know, kind of be that writer-director yeah. and kind of tell your story. And that's something that we, I've had that opportunity at Deform Watchbox, Damn. and we've also, we've had that opportunity for other people to come in as well. Cool, and, cool. You know, people who might not have the camera and the editing experience or yeah. producing or what have you, but they still can, they have an idea, they have a concept, they want to make it. So we've given that opportunity to a number of people. Yeah, that's yeah. cool, man. So I'm hoping yeah. you, Jared, want to yeah, make it. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will. I'm I will. excited make for your, I've been for thinking your of, I've talks. been thinking of some stuff. And I've been I working know you on, have. I've been, been working on my skills as well. So yeah, we might be able I'm to put something together. Yeah, 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 man. Totally. So, so you mentioned the, uh, the um, ambitions of doing feature film mm -hmm. uh, at some point with uh, under the Deform Lunchbox banner, uh, and that is would be one aspect of the the future of Deform Lunchbox. But what else, man? Like, where do you see uh, Deform Lunchbox? Is it still going to be a thing in 10, 15 years? Yeah, and, and what's what's totally. uh, what's it going to look like? What are you going to be doing? Are you going to be having robots <laughs> acting in your movie? Or <laughs> hopefully, like, hopefully okay. robots are that good by then that they mm -hmm. we can just hire robots. As yeah, I think so, man. Yeah. Um, I I think you know we're film is kind of our basis mm -hmm. I think we'd like to be doing mostly feature films yeah okay but I mean I love short that. films yeah so yeah. I, I one of my concepts of, uh, of a feature film would be like an anthology of shorts oh yeah I like and, that stuff yeah. and it's been done we've seen the ABC's of death we saw like VHS mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot anthologies aren't a new type of movie but mm -hmm. With our type of horror short, we focused it on kind of like the micro short, like yeah. the uh, 60 second to 120 seconds, like one to two minutes. Nice, nice. And so, I, I mean, I think it'd be really cool. We have a ton of these things written to do a, like an hour and a half of wow. tons of these micro shorts. Great, great. I hope maybe yours could be one of those in yeah, there, man, Jared. I mean, it'd there. be cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I love the idea of sitting down and watching like all a collaborative artists come together to work on little ideas yeah very true man it's i love that type of it. stuff as well and it kind of uh i think that that type of stuff would do very well especially like with the changing climate going from like the movie theater and kind of uh like festival circuit there is still a pretty good community there but like you and i both know and everybody out there knows that most people watch their stuff on streaming services yeah. so yeah i like the idea of doing like anthology stuff like that stuff i think fits very well into like the Netflix model mm. or different things, whoever, Hulu, all the stupid things you can or, or people even just on. on Instagram and yeah. say, watch this video real quick. Yeah, and, yeah. And so there's different, uh, I guess, environments to, to watch. These yeah, things. man, yeah. So it's that whole changing landscape, like as much as it is kind of, uh, a bummer for those like older filmmakers who are like oh now I have to do all this extra stuff but for new yeah. guys coming up it's like there's so many different opportunities different ways of getting your work out there and like yeah. marketing yourself I right? mean I can't so, even imagine yeah. uh, 20 30 years ago not having the internet not having a platform Bro, I don't even know what you would do yeah I don't know what you would do festivals and, I mean, and now <laughs> so there's so many festivals so now too yeah. so a lot of a lot of love for yeah it's really been democratized yeah. so that's kind of like the lesson uh, there is that there's so many opportunities out there it's just like get out there and kind of uh, take advantage of them right just yeah. just go out there and uh, and get it done um, so on that point uh, a lot of what I like to do on this show is give advice to people who kind of are looking at a Peter Hatch and saying man like how'd that guy get there how he's working in film man it's 
it's a notorious industry like anybody who has even tried like knows that if you can even make a living if you can even like pay your bills working in the television yeah. and film industry especially in Canada that is something uh, spectacular so uh, I'd like to get some some advice for some people who maybe want to build a, a career in the industry. So what are some of the tactics and stuff that you've used so far? Um, well, I think there's many, many tactics, yeah. I guess. But I guess a couple pointers I would say, and you could probably relate to this too, yeah. is don't limit yourself. Yeah. Uh, it helps to have a kind of different skills in different areas. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I know you're editing and you're shooting. Yeah. I edit, I shoot. Yeah. Having those in your back pocket are really Definitely, helpful. Man. Yeah. Um, Keep learning new skills, yeah. Keep learning new skills, stay positive, um, and just meet lots of people. Yeah, like, very you, true. You don't know, I mean, it's easy enough to say, go out there and network, because like, mm -hmm. I'm not very, I'm not, I'm an introvert myself, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, if you do meet somebody, you just never know. Like, I mean, you can meet someone on the littlest job. Still, yeah. I mean, the first job I did, one of the earliest jobs I did was filming a hockey tournament yeah. in, um, uh, somewhere up north, it was called the Silver Stick Hockey Tour in okay. Sarnia. Sarnia, yeah, beautiful Sarnia. Sarnia, Sarnia was beautiful, and it was a little job. Me and me and this other guy I had never worked with, and this was about ten years ago. Yeah. And this this friend of mine named Matthew, I'm not going to tell you his full name because sure, and Matthew. He's now a pretty big established producer. Yeah, sick. So I didn't think, you know, I did this little tiny hockey tournament job and because it went well, mm -hmm. you know, throughout the years now, my relationship with this, with Matthew has gone well and we've worked together and, uh, you know, we've expanded our careers together Nice. and I've learned a lot from him. He's a little older than me. So mm -hmm. I just, I guess my point there is you never know what thread can lead to your career. So true, man. Yeah, like it could yeah. just be one random person who you're doing a favor for, uh, yeah. and, and you over have... five, six, ten years, those relationships develop. I mean, think, think about us, Jared. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, we met, you know, in just funny way many years ago. Yeah. And we stayed friends. You've gotten into video, and ten years from now, you and I could be uh, Hollywood producers, man. It's possible, you know? man. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so. You just never know. Hopefully, so, uh, one of those uh, less sleazy of the Hollywood. Yeah, no one. I'm, sure the... <laughs> I'm not sure they have the best reputation right <laughs> yeah. now. But true. Okay. Anyways, maybe, yeah, and it will be the good ones. <laughs> We're going to change the industry. Yeah, yeah change the totally. industry, baby. We yeah. can change it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, right on. Um, so those are some of the, the things that you should do. Uh, expand your skill set. I wouldn't be here where I am today had I just stuck with graphic design. Like I had a lot of expectations going into business that I'm going to do like this thing I'm good at called graphic design and I'm going to make piles of money. And like turns out that's not exactly how it works. You got to be like very flexible. Yeah. You have to be adaptive and you have to be constantly learning new skills or else you're going to be you're going to be falling behind. Like, look, other people are learning them. Right. So yeah. if you're not learning it, then you're just uh, kind of change so fast yeah technology man. changes so fast yeah, you gotta yeah. kind of keep yeah keep learning that's a good absolutely tip. I like that. yeah it ties back into what we were saying earlier about like the fact that like technology is changing things so quickly yeah it sucks but at the same time massive opportunity right yeah so as long as you're adaptive and you can learn those new skills so uh that's great i think that's really great advice uh those are the things that you should do i want to get into the, the dirty do. the dirty side yeah what we are the do. or what mistakes what mistakes has uh peter made along the way I made a lot of mistakes <laughs> along the way. Took I don't a, know if I did talk took about a moment those. to think about all of them. Um, well, for the for the benefit of uh, of everyone watching. I, okay, so I guess um, something not to do, but I'm going to transition it into something that you the way to be. Right? Yeah. So okay. it's very yeah. easy to get frustrated and to be short tempered and mm. to um, let's say someone's asking you to do something that's outside the scope of what they were yeah. asked you, yeah. and it's easy to fire back and be like, "No, I'm not going to do that." So I guess. Some of the lessons I've learned over the years, uh, the wrong for making mistakes, yeah. is that you can always be polite. Nice. Always. This yeah. is a life rule yeah. I set up for myself. You can yeah. always be polite, even if you're telling someone to fuck off. Yeah. Bleep, bleep <laughs> that, maybe sorry. No, it's okay. We brought swears in the room on the last show. Yeah. So now swears are a thing. Swears are allowed? Yeah. Okay, yeah. geez, okay. Um, it, you can tell someone to F off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, very politely. Uh-huh, yes. You can tell someone, no, I can't, yeah. I'm not going to do yeah. that for you, yeah. very politely. Mm -hmm. So there's a way to be polite. Um, and. It just never, it always benefits you to be polite in yeah, those cases. Nice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like some, even also understanding that. Um, like polite, professional, like totally. yeah, don't lose your cool, man. And you yeah. might have a client who just doesn't understand editing. Yeah. And, and it's yeah. not their fault that they think yeah. it might be easier or they yeah. might not know how to communicate what they want yeah. or they miscommunicated what they for want. For sure, for sure. So it can be frustrating, but there's always a polite way to 
handle that. Yeah, and absolutely. I, and I man. guess yeah. um, better to better better to be polite than to burn bridges. Cool. I like that a lot. And like, I didn't think that that was gonna come up. But like, if we're getting a little bit personal, like that's uh, as I was like developing my skills in business and stuff like that. That was a lesson that I definitely had to learn the hard way. Is like. Yeah when something happens that's unexpected and like it's not things aren't going how how you want it to go you still have to keep like a cool head and then you have to you know still yeah approach like that person who you're working for or working with or whatever it is someone on your team or your employer and just yeah it's still like you might have some like things that you have to work through with them mm. absolutely but to to be losing your cool or getting angry and stuff like that it's totally it's totally unacceptable Doesn't help. and yeah you're just closing doors for yourself yeah. like it's it really is just like putting that ego in the back pocket right it's like okay i have to kind of like i feel like i want to react to this in like a crazy angry way but like that might not be like i could be totally wrong about that in my reaction and in retrospect that could be like whoa why did i do that and also yeah you might be like burning that bridge ruining your relationship and as you were saying earlier like any small relationship that you have like those things can snowball into something totally. amazing right yeah. so you definitely uh you definitely don't want to be burning any bridges and yeah just keep your keep your ego kind of in check yeah. it can be tough be solution about. based yeah absolutely and, and another thing I, I do is if i'm writing an email or something is frustrating or yeah, annoying yeah take this time away from it oh. come back to it uh a couple hours later yeah uh or if i sometimes when i write emails i do what i call um polite passes on yeah. them so yeah. i'll go back and rewrite an email and just uh like when i'm done writing the email I'll go back and make it more polite. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, polite passes. Yeah, that's take, what I call it. Take a minute away from it, and yeah, come back and with a fresh head. Let me tell you, there's so yeah. many times that I am so thankful that I did that. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's really good advice. I love that one. Mm -hmm. All right, that's really cool. Yeah, uh, yeah let's get back into uh, now that we've thrown some tips out there and yeah. some uh, some lessons that we hard learned lessons. Uh, let's get back into the creative process a little okay. bit. Okay. Yes. Uh, and for oh. those creators out there that are kind of um, maybe feeling a little bit stifled in their creativity. Maybe they don't feel like they can, uh, you know, that feeling that I'm sure you've experienced where all you have is ideas and you don't know how to really like put them out there mm -hmm. and stuff like that, right? So uh, yeah, what do you do when you don't have like that uh, inspiration? Like if you're just not feeling it or if you're feeling like you can't uh, express yourself properly as a creator, like what are some tactics uh, like specific things, specifically that you do. Like you know, specific I put a lot of thought into this yeah. exact question because cool. okay. awesome. I've seen this this yeah. happen where yeah. uh, people kind of lose themselves and they forget why they got into yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, media or arts. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I always need to do something personal every little while. Yeah, so if nice. I go like over a year without doing a personal project, mm. that's when I start to get that anxiety, the anxiousness. Um, you need a passion project, at least for my type of personality. Mm -hmm. Um, if I run, let's say I run out of ideas or I don't have anything on the plate that satiates me creatively, yeah. I, I guess I'll try to get involved in something else, like something that someone else might write or I'll, I mean, I, over this winter I'm going to be editing a short film, like a 30 minute short film. So that'll be like creatively rewarding, nice. even though I don't have to be the creator or the front runner. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's nice to take the back seat and, and aid somebody else on their creative process or their, yeah, for their sure. passion yeah um, but I think it's a nice balance like to keep in mind to, to have an outlet for creativity yeah constantly. yeah yeah I mean, even if it's just doing a music video or doing uh, a short film or writing a poem like something to get out there and let me tell you one of the most rewarding things for me is when you create something you write it from yeah. nothing yeah and yeah. then you see it finished yeah and you're, it's kind of this mind-blowing feeling and you're like whoa like i thought of this it w didn't exist right and now it does exist and then when you show someone even just one person watching yeah. it yeah. and being like whoa i i like that or i thought think about this or i think the character was thinking that or like yeah, taking yeah. It's so rewarding. Yeah, I like the way that you put that of like kind of taking a, a chance to remind yourself of why you got into yeah. it in the first place, right? And just yeah. like having that perspective. Also to like take your time, take time to like appreciate it, right? You you get caught up in like the work of it, yeah. and you're like, oh man, you start thinking that stuff of like, oh, I've worked how many hours this week, and you get in your own head about it. But yeah, take a moment and just like appreciate like where you are, right? You could be like working some type of like 
horrible job somewhere that you completely hate and like you're actually working in the field that you love doing something that like let's be honest a lot of people would kill to do right like just mm -hmm. to to be on a, on a set uh, like and especially people who are really into like horror and stuff like that like that niche community to mm -hmm. be able to kind of uh, be working in that space and be expressing yourself and all of that like it's really it really is uh, a gem and like I know you get tired sometimes man I get tired all the time but yeah. like you have to uh, to keep uh, on, working right? And yeah, you got to keep working. You got to motor on and yeah, take, but of course keep working and motor on, but also like that self care thing, right? Like take some time for yourself, take time to work on your own yeah. projects. Like, yeah, again, like reminding yourself, like, why do I like doing this? Why do totally. I care about this? Yeah. Why, why was I passionate about this in, in the first place? Sometimes you, you can lose touch a little bit. Yeah. So. And you know, for deform lunchbox, it was also a matter of kind of yeah. boiling down what it is I wanted to do. Yeah. yeah. Cause I know it happens to a lot of filmmakers, yeah. young people and they'll they'll make music videos and they'll do yeah. corporate videos and they'll do wedding videos and they'll yeah. do short films and they'll want to be working on features and they'll also be on commercials and sets and doing everything and they spread themselves so thin and I yeah. mean I'm I'm a little bit guilty of that too I do a lot of I do a lot of post at DIT mm -hmm. I shoot um, but it's nice to kind of sit back once in a while maybe just reflect and think like what did, what's the kind of movie that I want to make mm -hmm. And I got to a point where I kind of decided, you know, maybe music videos aren't really what I'm wanting to do. True, true. I'm doing so many of them, I'm like, yeah. not really what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I kind of boiled it down and said, well, what's the movie that I want to make? And so I kind of focused my creative energy into that. Nice. So at least I'm able to balance between, you know, my workload and working with clients and other producers and, and stuff. And then when I do get this free time, yeah. I boiled down exactly what it is I want to do in that free time. Yeah. I'm not trying to juggle 10 things. I'm not a photographer and then this, yeah. and this, and this, and this. You For gotta, sure. we have limited time as adults. Yeah, that's true too. So, yeah, that kind of a sweet spot between like having enough skills, but not like kind yeah. of spreading yourself so thin. And, and right? so many people yeah. will say to me, oh, you should do a, a YouTube channel on this. You should do a documentary on that. You should do a video on this. And oh, bro. This. And I'm sure you get that too. Yeah. If I not... made a YouTube channel about every single one of my interests, I would have one on cocktails. Yeah, like exactly. Have yeah. a movie one, business one, one yeah. about music. Like it would just go and go and go. You're right. Yeah. You have to, at a certain point, kind of you have to pare down, down and, and focus. But yeah. you do have to do your your own projects as well. And kind of when, when you said that, it, it also triggered something in my mind that was like oh and if you are working on your own stuff and you still feel like creatively invested that you're going to bring your best work not only to that but to everything else that you work yeah. on so it's almost like you owe, to, you owe it to yourself but you also owe it to your clients to like stay creative and like totally. stay engaged right and, yeah. and keep those skills sharp peter i got a deep question for you ready for a, a deep, a deep question deep. all right all right so what is the single most important thing that you offer to the world as a creator? Oh, that's a deep question. Yeah, I know, I told oh you I wanted to, it's a deep question. What's, wait, what's the single most? Yeah, uh, the single most like valuable and Valuable thing, thing I offer as a, um, as a creator. I mean, that's a hard question to answer. Yeah. I think the thing <laughs> It's is, supposed to be hard, I, I told you. To, you know, I think um, one thing that people like about me when they hire me to work yeah. on a project is that uh, I'm very honest. Nah, thanks. I get hired to edit a lot. I'll yeah. do a lot of posts. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, brutally honest. So people will come to me if they, if they, um, people won't come to me, let's say, yeah. if they want a nice sugary, this looks great, mm -hmm. fluff, mm -hmm. fluffy nut, mm -hmm. whatever. And mm -hmm. if someone sends, sends me their final edit, I'll usually give them the fluffy answer. Uh -huh. But if someone says no, I want you. I want you to really tell me what I need to fix, or I, yeah, I really want yeah, you to get involved. Yeah. Then it's like, well, I'm gonna start telling you what doesn't work, and right. I'm gonna start telling you things that I feel don't work. I'm just gonna be an open book mm -hmm. that way. So I think honesty, uh, being honest, is important. But the other thing that that honesty kind of ties into is that when uh, you hire me to work on your video or yeah. to be a part of your video, yeah. I it's like 110 percent for me. Nice. I don't ever really treat it like a half-assed no, side job. you treat job. it like your own thing. Yeah, I treat my own, my own thing, and I want to. Like, I just have this inner drive to always make it as good as I possibly right. can. Um, so, if you if you're working with me, then you yeah. kind of have a soldier. Like I look at myself like a yeah, like, nice. like a yeah. soldier. That yeah, I'm you're gonna with. work as hard as you yeah possibly can and deliver the best thing. Totally, yeah. and like the honesty kind of comes from that. Yeah. So sometimes I've had uh, you know with directors being honest I'll yeah. work with them and they might not feel the same way I do yeah, and, yeah. Um, it just kind of becomes that um, 
that honesty is coming from a place of trying to make the video the best. Yeah, you can absolutely, make it, man. So. And I think that that's like a, an incredibly valuable thing. So I think that that's a, a very good answer to that question because I think that's going to help a lot of people's careers. Like if you actually heed that advice and always bring that honesty, because like when you're working for like some very important person, there's probably a lot of ass kissers around. Yeah. Them, right? Like I mean, people, you have to yeah. pick and tell. Like yeah. there's times if I'm on set and I'm a DIT or I'm doing a, a role in the machine of a, a big set. Yeah. It's completely inappropriate for me to go up to the, to someone and say, I think this is this or that. Right, right. You have to understand when your time is. Mm -hmm. um, but I think as an editor, yeah. especially, yeah. you have to have that critical eye for those things. Mm -hmm. And m in my purview, uh, video editing or yeah. editing in general, the, the first thing you're doing is looking for problems. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. not looking at your edit, whether it's writing or whether you're editing a graphics or mm -hmm. whether you're editing uh, a movie. Yeah. The first thing you're probably going to do, I mean, at least for me, is yeah. I'm identifying all the problems. Yeah, for sure. It's like creating a sculpture almost. Yeah. Like you take the raw footage, like the raw material, and you like carve it down into something. Yeah. And, and just okay. in the process, you're you're better off removing what doesn't work right. first right. and then taking the time to decide which take to use over what does work yeah, yeah. rather than making that decision. The easiest thing to do when you're editing, in my opinion, is to go through and remove everything that doesn't work. Yeah, nice. I like that. That's yeah, a good approach. The first, yeah, the first step. Yeah, um, very good. Yeah, I, li I like that point a lot about, uh, about the honesty and n having tact with it as well, right? Like that's kind of uh, an addition to it is like, yeah, you're going to be honest and you're going to put out like your sincere opinion but at the same time like you're going to start to notice when your spot is to do that right yeah, like exactly. you're not going up in the middle of shooting the scene and being like oh this needs to be like the blah, blah. but totally. later on when you have like a meeting with the director you have some type of like uh, opportunity to speak then yeah you're going to be putting those yeah. ideas out there but yeah there's, there's plenty there's incredible ways to do it. back there. to the politeness point yeah. like let's say you're yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Uh, just a camera operator on, right. on something yeah. and in your head you think well we should really get this this shot yeah yeah there's a rather than saying like oh we should have this shot or making it a, a negative point be solution based right. And maybe say something like, "Hey, would you like me to just punch in and grab this shot, or or what, should we get? A, are we going to get a slow mo of this of this setup, or whatever you're asking?" But like, yeah, there's a man. polite way to ask, and maybe they'll just say, "No, we don't need it," and you say, "Okay." Yeah, yeah. Like, I like you, that, dude. you know, and they, they say one of the best pieces of advice I got in film school is the line, uh, "Thank you, I'll take it into consideration." Mm -hmm. Because, you know, especially when you're a creator, you're a director, or a writer, you're going to have a... I'm sure you get this too, Jared. A lot of people telling you what you should do. Yeah. Oh, I know yeah, I've yeah. done it to you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, everyone yeah. probably told you, hey... Sometimes they're right. <laughs> sometimes they're right, but, but sometimes they're not, yeah. or they're not understanding what the, the complete picture is. Yeah. Um, and, or sometimes two people tell you opposite things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just a matter of not saying, no, I'm not doing that, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. But it's like saying, thank you, I'll take it into consideration. Cool, cool. Maybe you won't do it. Yeah. But it's a... The play, yeah. the play does, right? yeah, you're putting that stuff yeah. out there and you're doing it in the in the right way. Yeah, sometimes it's not like what you say, it's how you say it, right? You yeah. can be giving that criticism, but yeah, do it with talk, do it in the right way and yeah. it'll be better received for sure, man. Yeah, all right, I got uh, a couple more questions Good. for you. Right. A couple more. Um, yeah, the, one of them is going to be another uh, tough question. You might, <laughs> oh, to, might be another bit of a pause okay. there as, okay. we, as we think of the, okay. uh, the most brilliant answer that you we can. You can edit out the pause. No, hell no. no okay. You can't edit this That's stuff. That's the best moment. I don't have time for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, for someone who's breaking into the industry again, okay. um, what is one thing, one secret about the film and television industry that they need one to know. One secret. Okay, well, one here secret. I got to preface this because yes. you know, I could say I've broken into the film industry and I, I like yeah. I, I, that's where I work in. Do, yeah. But I'm sure there's some other people who are much more established sure, who sure. are, you know, really well off and they have tons of equipment and they look at me and they go, you haven't really yeah. made it. You know what I mean? And, sure, and then someone know. in Hollywood says, you haven't really made it. So there's, it's a matter of perspective. Yeah. It's all perspective. Yeah. Like there's varying degrees. Yeah. And to some, someone who's just shooting wedding videos, uh, every summer and mm -hmm. making a really good living off of that, mm -hmm. who am I to say that they're not, what level anybody's at? Sure. Somebody sure. could be made. And I, some people always ask me, they say, what's your goal? And I said, well, my ultimate goal is to be able to hole up in my basement and make scu uh, clay sculptures that are going to be crazy and no one will appreciate and spend 10 years yeah, on it. Like, yeah. like that's the, who's to judge who on where they are and yeah. making in. But yeah. I guess if, in terms of just making money, let's say. Right. So from not making money and just doing your creative to making money, um, you have, well, that's a good question. What's the number one secret? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the number one secret is to just do it. Yeah. And I know that sounds like not very helpful, mm. but just 
you have to just do it. And I think the, the advice that I'll give that I know some people disagree with is you might have to do some work for free. Yeah, yeah. And no, that's true. I know you have to get your I've channel done free work. And, and look, how, look how much skills you built by yeah. doing your own channel. Yeah. And by me doing these short films. Oh, like, not even just my own content. I've done like literally free work for people. Yeah. Just like for the same here for the pr like promotion of it for exposure, all it's those totally. things that people like get so afraid of. Like, oh, I'm gonna work for exposure. Oh, that's stupid. But and maybe they're a charity. Maybe they're a startup. Yeah, maybe they're. For charities, uh, man. Yeah. It's not necessarily yeah. like they're for making sure. a ton of profit themselves. Yeah, yeah. So that's important. Like, I never would have learned to edit had I not been editing my own short film. Yeah, part. yeah. So that's what got made me an editor. Yeah. Um, I know I would not be an editor if I just waited for someone to give me the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely, man. Be a little bit generous with your time, especially when you're starting out. Totally. Like, you can't have this, again, that the ego is coming out again and totally. saying, oh, I don't get out of bed for less than a thousand bucks, but like. Yeah, and I, I know mm. people have gone down that road <laughs> and it's stifled their career. For sure. And their relationships have yeah. been able to build. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, I tell you, if it, it'll suck working for free. Mm -hmm. There's obviously limits to mm -hmm. what you should do. Um, yeah, nothing. be smart about it. Be yeah. smart about it. Yeah. But I, I tell you, if you uh, are working for free and you're doing a good, good job and you're, and yeah. you're positive and, yeah. and you're solution based, I don't think it'll be long before people are offering you that. Yeah, money. people are going to notice that pretty quick. Man. Yeah, yeah and I mean, I, the other piece of advice I can give it might be a little more uh, limited for some people is. I mean, there's a lot of positions in film that need to be filled right now. Yeah, like it's not like there's a total shortage of. It's not like there's a there's a lot of opportunities. Yeah, yeah, and so many niche skills within that, right? Like, yeah. there's so many jobs involved with like a big production that people don't even think about. Like something that you do all day sometimes on set is like something that someone would never consider because it doesn't end up in front of the camera, but yet yeah. it's like very important, right? Because if the footage doesn't get backed up, then we yeah. don't have that scene yeah. in the movie, and the totally. movie doesn't friggin' make sense. I don't know if it's totally, <laughs> so I do a lot of DIT yeah. where I yeah. back footage up. So yeah, just yeah, that's one of the things. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. So um, they, they know what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. So, and what DIT stands for? I think it's digital imaging technician, okay. and yeah, so it's like color dailies. Yeah. Uh, backup sound of yeah important stuff. important important stuff and a, and a job that like I said a lot of people don't know that's out there and there's like the guys that hold the mics there's people that set up the lights there's set dressers people who paint the stuff like yeah, lots tons of, people, of carpenters lots yeah of people in production yeah. administration all oh yeah stuff. oh yeah and there's there's like decent money in it the hours yeah. are long so at the very least you're gonna bulk up those hours and get yeah, some money totally right? so, yeah okay well yeah we've had a lot of uh, good advice on the show today so I think yes. we'll probably pretty much uh leave it there i think it's already going to be a bit of a long one so that's good yeah, man okay. yeah long and packed with value so packed with value it, and deep questions yeah so some of the uh takeaways i think today like uh some of the stuff that i'm thinking about right now is those ideas of like uh yeah being grateful for what you have as uh as a creator um yeah keep working keep expanding your stay skills polite. Yes. Stay polite. stay polite uh those, like that relationship building stuff is uh is definitely huge and uh the last point is that thing that you were saying about like um being like practical and salt like be like taking that mentality based. yeah of a, yes. of a problem solver right yeah. like you can get obsessed in this idea of like who's right they can like there's a problem comes up and then everyone wants to argue about whose fault it is and i hate that like that oh yeah it's such or, a waste or of time. i said we should have yeah. done it that other way yeah oh, or oh, I, my I God, called it i told you and so it's like yeah. i told you that, yeah. that never don't gets you that. anywhere yeah. just don't do it yeah yeah people will remember they'll yeah, be like oh yeah. john did say that yeah but the second john says i said i said that yeah man. then you're like you lost all the credibility yeah. that you had for saying in the first place john. yeah yeah i think you that know? that's what really separates like the more that i'm kind of uh figuring this stuff out, like how to actually make money in the, in the creative field, I'm realizing that that's what really like separates uh, people who can like actually do it and people who end up going back to like a normal job or just kind of like floundering and never really like act, getting where they want to be. And it's like when, when things don't go how you planned it, what's your reaction? Totally. Right? It's just like agree. building that, uh, that like kind of resilience. Um, yeah. Maybe. Resilience maybe. Yeah. yeah it's like a, a personal, like yeah resilience of like your your mental state that you can actually like get through that because there's tons of stuff that's happened that i could have like freaked out about but yep. yeah you get better at just being like okay 
like, yeah, we're in the weeds here, but like, how do we fix it? Right. Yeah. So, and you yeah. know what, Jared, I gotta say, while we're still on camera here, sure, yeah. we gotta get you, uh, I've gotta get you in a deep form yeah, lunchbox, yeah, yeah, either, yeah, either yeah, acting yeah. or you're writing, directing or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll shake on that. Let's right do here. it. Yeah, we gotta do, do it, it, man. It, I, I know it. your audience is probably looking forward to your <laughs> type of weird, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Humor we can, something. yeah, we can bring some weird stuff too. Yeah. yeah it's not we gotta do it, man. We owe it. We owe it to you. Okay. All right. All right. So yeah, look forward to that. I'll do a little bit of, uh, uh, production with Peter definitely yeah. it's on the on the to-do list for uh, for 2020 so yeah and uh, for now I hope that you guys uh, got as much value out of this video as I did I hope that you guys uh, learned quite a bit and that you go uh, out today and feel inspired and uh, want to create some stuff so it's really great Peter I appreciate you uh, being on the show so Thanks much so man much having me, Jared. I hope such a great you, conversation yeah. yeah totally and uh, you guys out there if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet what are you doing? What's wrong with you? What are you doing? Yeah. Go down there, click on the subscribe thing. Uh, next couple ring weeks. Ring the bell. Ring, ring the, the bell. Ring the friggin' bell. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to take a couple weeks off of videos uh, and I'm going to come back with uh, some more uh, solo videos for you guys. I think we're going to talk about video production for, uh, for about a month on the channel. Awesome. So, yeah, look, look forward to that. That's going to be uh, coming up soon. And uh, Peter, thanks again. Thank you guys so much for watching. And check out Deform Lunchbox. Check out Deform Lunchbox. Definitely. Link in the description. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time. Awesome. Peace.